Good afternoon. This is Jeff Risen from Lions Wire and Detroit Lions Podcast, live from Allen Park. We just wrapped up the uh, Thursday OTA here. Uh, it's June 3rd. Uh, get a little shot of uh, where we're at there. They're about to start the player Zoom, so I'll make this one fairly quick. A uh, little bit of notes today. They went longer today. Um, saw quite a bit of uh, more action. Uh, my, my focus was generally today on the defense. Um, there are two fields. I wound up spending most of the time on the defensive side of the field. Uh, just looking at the players and seeing how they how they interact, how they fit together. Uh, we'll start with the linebackers uh, because they, I, that was, that was a, a, a big focus for me today. They do a lot of coverage stuff with the linebackers in terms of drills, uh, dropping, coverage zones, and things like that. Uh, and a guy that we haven't talked about a lot um, on the podcast and, and also just in general in the media is Sean Dion Hamilton. And he looked really good today. He, he looked very fluid, very comfortable in space. Uh, he, he moves well, anticipated uh, the, uh, when they did the, uh, the team drills. He anticipated very well. I, I thought uh, there was a lot to like about there. He was running with the twos, um, the, the, the first team linebackers. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Collins is not here. So uh, that spot, Alex Anzalone and Jelani Tavai were the ones. Uh, and it was Jalen Reeves Maben and Sean Dion Hamilton as the twos. Uh, with Alex Anzalone mixed in uh, throughout all over the place. Uh, and that's uh, that, that's kind of what I, I, I expect without Collins here. Um, and when he comes back, obviously, he's going to take over one of those roles. But uh, really good day for Sean John Hamilton out there. Uh, looked very comfortable, looked very at ease. Um, and, and honestly, he, he looked like he was ready to play in nickel packages, uh, which I think is one of the roles that, that you're looking at for him. Uh, so for those of you who uh, had already had him on the cut list, uh, you might want to hold off on that. Uh, watched uh, the cornerbacks. Uh, Jeff Okuda looked good. He he was the, the one of the starting outside cornerbacks. Very good day in coverage. Uh, he, he's a guy that um, he laid out for a ball, broke up a pass uh, from Tim Boyle. Uh, that was a little bit underthrown, but it was a, is a play that I don't. I'm not sure that he would have made last year. There, there's a confidence to him. There's a. a a definite burst uh, out of cuts uh, that you didn't necessarily see last year with the the sports hernia injury that he had that, that was working for him. Uh, was 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 impressed at how well he played and how well he carried himself. He carried himself like he was the number one cornerback on the team. I think that's something that we want to see stepping up in a year or two. Uh, now on the flip side, Amani Oruwariye did not have a good day. Uh, he got beat on a couple of, of uh, drag routes, crossing routes, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it, it, it was hard to tell how far away <laughs> they were from the line of scrimmage uh, from our vantage point. But uh, uh, he got run away from Victor Bolden, ran away from him on a rep. Uh, and what was the other one? Let me check the notes here. Uh, Jonathan Adams, who was wearing booty shorts, by the way, and I, I give him a thumbs up for that. Uh, number 83, the undrafted wide receiver from uh, from Arkansas State, uh, just torched him on a simple drag route. Uh, just kept running running away from him and uh, Oruwariye never caught up. One of the things that you notice when you're watching Oruwariye in relation to the other cornerbacks is that he's very upright when he runs and I think that's something that uh, they, they can work with him on uh, and uh, the, the defensive backs coach uh, did actually talk to him a little bit about staying a little bit lower in his stance uh, so that again not a great day for him that doesn't mean again it's one day uh, we got 90 minutes of practice today as opposed to 60 uh, last week it is, it is hot and sunny out uh, it's a beautiful day for football. Uh, it looked like it was going to rain earlier, but uh, one of getting it in. Uh, a couple other notes from players. I uh, saw Michael Brockers today. He's here wearing number 91. He's a big dude, uh, and I mean that uh, tall. Uh, look Taller than you would expect him to be, taller than you would think he is as listed. Uh, he is a defensive end only. I think, I think that's pretty clear. He's going to play the five technique, the six, maybe the seven. Uh, he is not a nose tackle. I know there are people out there that think that. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. He, he's just not it. So, uh, so he, he looks good. He looks physical. Um, he and uh, An Anzarike, uh were standing next to each other, and uh, Anzarike is bulkier. Uh, and I think that's that's one of the things that stood out to me was how lean Brockers is at six five uh, versus uh, uh, Anzu at uh, six three. But uh, it, I, I would guess that Anzu probably weighs more. Uh, so that's that's something to keep an eye on. 
Um, look, they're, they're not going against the, the off offensive and defensive linemen are separated. They're not doing drills together. It's non-contact. They're not in pads. They're just wearing helmets. So you, you can't judge too much about what they're doing. Uh, and by and large, the defensive linemen were off doing drills on the side um, in the crest of the hill. Uh, not on the hill. The hill hasn't been used yet. It's still here. Uh, it's not being used, though. Uh, so, so that was the impression there. Uh, let's talk about the safeties a little bit. People who know me know that I have harped that safety is the biggest need on the team. After watching the practice again today, there is absolutely no question that safety is the biggest need on this team. It is not good. Um, I have advocated for Tracy Walker. I have stood up for him. I am hopeful that it will work for him. Today uh, was not his best day. Uh, quite, quite frankly, he did not look like a guy that, uh, that belonged in a starting lineup. Um, having said that, he's clearly the best safety here. Uh, th th we were talking amongst the media, and I won't, won't name names, but uh, <laughs> they'll admit to it if you ask them. There's not an NFL safety outside of Tracy Walker on this roster right now. Will Harris is just, he's so slow to react. He's so, there's just still no instinct there with him at all. Um, in, in the passing shell drills, he's flat-footed. He's the last guy moving every time. Um, and he doesn't have that kind of, of physical ability of, of aggression and acceleration to make that work. So uh, it, it's rough, man. Um, th th maybe maybe some of the rookies will step up. Uh, Malif Fanu did get one rep that I saw um, as sort of a, a split safety. Um, they were running split safeties all day, by the way. Um, not, not, not strong and free, just two sides, uh, especially when they were in zone. But uh, it, it was pretty easy pickings for the quarterbacks, honestly. Uh, quarterbacks, let's go to that. Jared Goff looked great. Uh, all the things that you heard in the press conferences before today, uh, before the practice today, um, they're legit. He looks really good. He's He's got some zip on the balls. There's there's anticipatory throwing. But the only criticism that I could make of him, he did throw one ball where he stared down where he was going to throw it the entire time, and it would have been a hospital ball to Hawkinson over the middle. Hawk made a great catch. But uh, uh, he threw it right where, uh, if, if it were padded and contact and, and playing another team, uh, the safety on the play, and I, I believe it was Will Harris at that point, um, would have leveled him. Uh, it, 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 but, man, Goff has zip on the throws. He, he's crisp. Uh, there's a lot to like about it. And there's a significant, significant drop-off between him and David Blau and Tim Boyle. Let's talk about that for a second. Today, again, it's just one day. You know, 90 minutes of reps. Today, David Blau was a lot better. And I mean, it's not even like close. This, it, it's, it's like the difference between Stafford and Kellen Moore is how much better David Blau was than Tim Boyle today. Uh, it, it's that radical. It was that, again, just one day. But anybody who thinks that, that Tim Boyle is, is going to start for this team, no, not a chance. Uh, he just doesn't have the zip on the ball. David Blau throws a better ball. He throws a cleaner ball. Um, it's not always as accurate, and it certainly takes more effort for Blau to get that throw out there. But uh, uh, Boyle was just off. Um, missing receivers, throwing throwing high, throwing low, um, just not, not in any sync. Now, again, it's one practice, but uh, it, it was really striking today how much better David Blau was than Tim Boyle. So... Uh, you, you can file that away um, for for when uh, the, the talk comes up. If Goff has a bad day in camp later, uh, and people are like, "Oh, Tim Boyle's time," I, I don't. He's closer to being QB three than he is QB one. Let's put it that way. Uh, just a couple of other little observations. Uh, they did a fumble drill uh, for the defense where they were uh, making them strip the ball. Um, Okuda looked really good in that. Jalen Reeves Maben had a, a couple of really good reps in that. Uh, and I'll give it up to, to undrafted. Uh, cornerback Jerry Jacobs. He had a fantastic rep where he swatted the ball down, spiked it down, and it bounced right back up to him, and he ran in. Uh, really good rep. He got a lot of praise from the coach for that. Um, beyond that, there, there's not a lot to see with uh, with with the coverage on that. Uh, did watch... What else, what else do I have in the notes here? Uh, so, one of the, th the the themes in the press conferences today, we, get, we talked to uh, Deuce Staley and Anthony Lynn before practice, uh, and they both talked about the, using the running backs in space and as receivers. You saw a lot of that in practice today. Uh, and you saw, <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys, DeAndre Swift and, and Jamal Williams look really, really good as receivers. They're fluid. Um, it, it's, it's akin to when Theo Riddick was here, honestly. They have that sort of skill set as, as receivers who happen to be running backs um, in the passing game. It, it was very nice to see 
the defense has no answer for it. Well, let me say that. The Lions defense that's here doesn't have an answer for it. Um, we'll see what happens in the NFL, but uh, Jamal Williams made a play today where he caught a little pass one-handed in front of Godwin Igwebuike, who's a safety who's trying to make the team. Um, it was an ankle breaker. It was like Allen Iverson crossing somebody over. Um, and it was it, it drew some oohs and ahs from the, the players that were watching uh, the, the refs from the sidelines. So that was uh, that was a fun highlight for that. But just, you know, Swift. Swift looks really good coming out of the backfield catching the ball. Uh, one note, Jamar Jefferson put the ball on the ground twice as a receiver today. There was another rep where uh, he didn't even um, anticipate that the ball was going to be coming to him so hot. Golf threw it. Um, it was a fast ball, and, and it was like over Jefferson's head, and he never even uh, came close to catching it. So there's some work to be done there in the receiving game with, with the, the, the late-round rookie there. Uh, but uh, and, and again, so this is not necessarily the drill that he's here for. He is a power inside runner. You don't get to see that in, in OTA, so um, take that for what it's worth. But uh, as far as the passing game goes, probably not going to see a lot of involvement from, from Jamar Jefferson there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Todd Gurley because it came up again in the press conference. Uh, Dan Campbell did say, yes, we are still interested. Uh, first off, the first reaction to that is, my God, he talked about a player. Uh, Matt Patricia would maybe have acknowledged that that Todd Gurley was a player in the NFL. He certainly would have wouldn't have expressed any interest in it or uh, any any Lions thoughts on it. Uh, the fact that they they did say something uh, it, it tells me a lot. Quite honestly, it tells me that uh, that they're comfortable talking about who they are. They're secure in what they have, um, and that they're courting him a little bit. Uh, my personal guess, and it's just a guess on this, is that they will sign Todd Gurley after next week's mini mandatory mini camp. Uh, I don't think that, that Todd Gurley will get much out of being in minicamp, quite honestly. I think he's a veteran. You know exactly what you've got with, with, with Ray Agnew and, and, and Brad Holmes being here. That They have a pretty good idea of who he is. Uh, from what I gather, there are no other places that are really all that interested in Gurley, so this might be a, a case of uh, he signs here because nobody else needs him or wants him at this point. Uh, I would caution people to get too, not to get too excited about it. He would come in as RB3, and I think that's something that was made very clear um, behind the scenes today. Uh, this is not a guy who's coming in and taking a starting job from DeAndre Swift, and he's not taking the number two job uh, away from Jamal Williams, who, by the way, continues to look very good and continues to be a leader uh, on the practice field. You see it a lot, um, just, just little subtle things. This is a guy who really enjoys playing football, and he makes it makes it enjoyable for everybody around him. And I think that's something that this coaching staff really appreciates. So that's where we're at with Gurley. Uh, I'm going to sign off here because they are starting the player zooms now, and I need to get over there. Um, so, so just a little logistical thing. All right, that wall right there—that's that's, that's the, the practice facility. If you see over there uh, where the flags are, that's that's where the main building is. So our media center is outside, just a little bit uh, to the right of that. The players are actually on the Zoom right on the other side of the wall, but we, because they're doing Zooms, because we can't do live press conferences, they're, they're literally on the other side of the wall from where we're talking to them uh, from outside on, on our phones.